Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that in your XAMPP control panel you have MySQL running, which I do. And now we're going to want to go ahead and go into Command Prompt and navigate to wherever you have your default installation of MySQL installed and also navigate to the bin folder. Um, for our tutorial, it's of course in XAMPP, MySQL, bin. Now we're going to want to log into MySQL using MySQL. And this is the default installation login, which is MySQL username of root. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and create a database and we're going to call it customer. Let's make sure that we are using this database. Okay, and at this point, we're going to want to go ahead and create our customer name table and we're going to give it an ID, which is the primary key, of, and then we're only going to add the first name here, just to be simple and just to display it on the screen. Go ahead and push enter, and that should go ahead and create your customer database with a customer name table. Okay, now let's go ahead and insert into our table, just go ahead and insert one value, which can be anything we really want, but for this instance we're just going to use one, and ye test. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that those values are in there. And you can see our ID and ye test information is in there. So now we can go ahead and move on to generating our model controller based on this table. Right, so to do that, let's go ahead and go to our local host, our test, and index.php slash key. And you're going to notice here are all the generators for us, and let's click on model generator. And you'll notice that we got a database exception because uh, technically the connection string is incorrect at this point. So what we want to do is go ahead and open Eclipse and go into the main.php file, which is in protected, config, main. And we're going to want to make sure that this SQLite database is commented out, because we're not using SQLite. And we're going to want to go ahead and uncomment this portion, which is specific to MySQL, which is what we're using. We're also going to want to change the database name from default to the one we just created, which is customer, and save. Okay. Also, you need to make sure that the username and password is the same that is set up on your local machine. So now let's go ahead and go back into our model generation, and let's try to refresh. And there we go. You can see that now we have our model generator running, which means it's connected to the database correctly, and we are ready to generate our model based on our database table. Now that we're in the model generator portion of GUI, we are going to see a few things here that you're going to notice right off the bat, which is table prefix. Um, right here is TBL. Um, normally this won't be here. It should say empty. This is just the prefix that you would add to a table. Basically, you're telling GUI to ignore what is at the front of the uh, name of the table that you're creating. Uh, so this would assume that you had a table, say, named table underscore customer name. So we can go ahead and blank that out. And now we're going to enter the full table name. So if you did have a prefix, you would enter prefix and then the table name. We don't, so we're going to go ahead and enter in our database name, which is customer name. You can see that the model class name is auto-generated for you. And so we're going to click preview. And if it worked correctly, you're going to see that the customer name model was created for you. And let's go ahead and click generate. And you can see that the code has been generated successfully. And now we have a model which is mapped to our database table named customer name. So now let's go ahead and open Eclipse and start getting the data that is in the customer name table onto the screen. Okay, now that we've created our model, let's go ahead and go back into Eclipse 
and let's take a look at it real quick. It'll be in protected models and let's refresh here and there we go customer name now this customer name is going to extend the C active record class in Yi, which is going to basically map the customer name table which you can see rules have for ID and first name and any kind of uh, function that you would need to search or to pull out information from that database table will be contained in this model controller. So how exactly do we get the data out of the model and into onto the page? Well, let's go ahead and open our customer controller that we created earlier. The first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create a public variable. We're going to go ahead and call it, uh, let's say, first name set it equal to nothing. This is going to be our holder for the first name variable that we're going to pull out of our database. The second thing we're going to need to do is going to go ahead and have to modify this action index function here. So we're going to do that by typing in our, by first setting our first name variable equal to customer name, which is the model which we signify here. And we are going to want to use the find by primary key function, which exists as part of the C active record uh, class. And if you, there are a myriad of different ways to pull data out of the database. We're just going with the most simplistic version right here and even hard coding the primary key. Um, if you want to look at uh, any other ways, it's really good to go and look at the uh, reference of the C Active Record class online. Um, so we're pulling out the data by primary key. And we just have a few more lines of code to set first name variables again. Like that. And one last thing, and that is to make, is to pass the, not only the render command, which is the page here, but we also want to pass it an array of parameters. And the parameter we want to pass is first name. And we want to set it equal to this class and first name. And there we go. That should be it. Now save it, and that should go into the database using the model here. Find the primary key and return the first name column, and we're going to set it to the first name variable. And then finally, we're going to have the application render the index page with a set of arrays, one of which is named first name. Now what we need to do is make the view display this page. So the last step in this is to go to the view and have the view display our first name variable. The first name variable, as you remember, came from the customer name model, which is mapped to the customer name table. And we've got the value of first name by finding the primary key of one. And we are returning the information to the index page of the customer mo controller with an array of parameters called first name. So let's go ahead and drill down to protected views index. Now all we have to do simply is let's go ahead and add a paragraph tag here and let's do a PHP echo and just go ahead and type in our variable, which is first name. And now we can save our file. And let's go ahead and open a browser here to our local host with an index of customer, an action of customer. And you'll see here that the ye test value was pulled from the database table and displayed on the screen. 
Alright, well thank you for joining us on these uh, set of videos on the Yi developers uh, review. We kind of showed you the model view controller design paradigm that the Yi framework uses. We've shown you how to set up a complete development environment which includes uh, ZAMP as your web stack, your IDE Eclipse, and source control using Bazaar and cloud control. We've also shown you how to put data from MySQL and generate it on the screen, and how to use tools such as Yik to generate a skeleton web application. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials and I hope that they helped you immensely. Thank you.